Okay, this is another training tape. This training tape has to do with uh, what I like to call fouls at the snap. The majority of these plays are uh, false start plays. We're going to also get into illegal shifts, illegal formations, uh, offsides on the defense, illegal motion, and delay game on the defense. Um, something that we have to improve on from last season is uh, calling obvious false starts. Uh, as you see in this video, uh, we'll call false starts a lot of times, and uh, we cannot see the person who actually, quote-unquote, beats the snap. Or we call a foul for someone who is just quicker than the rest of their teammates, and at the same time, times the snap perfect. So uh, if you're a line of scrimmage official, you should stare at the ball, okay, and let your peripheral determine the uh, the player or players that beat the snap. Uh, referees are not absolved from calling a false start. Uh, they should focus on the quarterback and the backs for flinches. However, they should never call a false start where a where it involves beating the snap, whether or not that happens because they don't have the ball and the player in the same frame where the line of scrimmage officials do. And then umpires, also, they'll be looking at flinches internally on the center and the two guards. They may catch a tackle, too. Uh, they, can, they can play into beating the snap because they can see the snap, too, because they're staring right at it for the legality of the snap. So let's get started because uh, we do have a lot of plays, 44 to look at on this video, and I'll try to go through them quick. So this first play illustrates an obvious false start. Okay, we'll watch the interior alignment. And, yep, they beat the snap. And so what I like the best about this uh, situation is you can compare and contrast two situations where watch the line of scrimmage at the official at the bottom compared to the line of scrimmage official at the top. Uh, this, this illustrates the hustle that I'm looking for whenever we're reporting fouls. So watch the line of scrimmage official at the bottom, sees the foul, kills the clock, runs in, and he's uh, communicating right away that it's a false start. Where And the other spec, uh, the, the line of scrimmage official at the top, only takes two steps on the field. So when, when we're looking at it this year, I'd like to see you more like the line of scrimmage official at the bottom who's hustling in and do this. Next play, we'll look at. So here's a situation. We have a false start. And again, I mentioned this earlier. We'd like to see some hustle. From the from the headlines when at the top, but does the guy beat the snap? So let's look at it. Listen, I'm going to tell you it's really close, okay? And it doesn't jump out in the screen, and we can't really tell. But as the guy moves, the ball is probably moving. So this is a situation where we could have gotten fooled by just the fact that the tackle is quicker than the rest of the rest of his uh, teammates there. Okay, next play, the headlinesman calls a, another false start. Let's check and see how that happens. Again, we have another false start, and do we see something that's clear and obvious here? The, the, now, this is a different situation where the wide out at the top of the screen here. We're looking at him compared to the snap of the ball. To me, it's, again, very, very close. And this is these are situations where, and I know what is going to happen here. You're, you're on the uh, visiting team sideline. They're yelling at you that uh, that player left early. And, you know, I, I get the same comments whenever situations like that. But if you can look at them in the eye and say, Coach, he was quicker than the rest of his teammates in time to snap. Because a lot of these receivers or even linemen will not go off of cadence. They will stare at the ball here. But if you are going to fall false start here, I'd like to see you hustle in, throw the flag, kill the clock, and let's hustle in to kill this play. Next play here. Again, I'll rewind it back. Do we see clear and obvious movement prior to the snap? Number 71 does rock back here. Okay, he never really gets set. He's uh, rocking back in his stance, and that is a foul for a false start. You know, we cannot let them get that uh, extra momentum backwards. So this is a correct call for a false start, but again, uh, I'd like to see a little bit more. We have the flag. We don't need to watch the flag go up in the air. 
kill the clock, run in, report the foul to the referee. This one comes from the line judge at the bottom of the screen. Let's watch it again. This is another situation where the wide receiver times the snap. And we call him for a false start. But hustle in, okay? Um, I'm going to be a little bit more technical this year when I'm watching film. And, uh, you know, so here's another one with the, the line judge throwing a flag. But as you can see, let's watch the left tackle again. Rocks back right before the snap. And this is a good call for false start because the left tackle clearly gets the advantage of rocking back in his stance prior to the ball snapping. Okay? So, we don't call a false start here. So what do we think about the action by the slot receiver? Watching the ball, does he leave early? Yes, he does. Okay, so this is, this is where, you know, as a coach, um, we saw a few other plays from this game that were, we called very technically when it came to false start. But then we look at a play like this, and we have an obvious situation where the number three receiver right here leaves early and we don't call it. So this is the this is the instances where our credibility really goes under fire because of you know and the consistency of the calls during the game just disrupts the flow of the game and the and the coaches are are really pulling their hair out because they're trying to teach their players to you know adjust to the officiating. So we have a receiver who leaves early and we don't call a false start there. Next one, this one's called by the line judge. Again, what do we think about that number three receiver? Does he time the snap or does he beat the snap? He just a little bit before the snap here. Again, we are very technical throughout this entire game. So we have to be consistent. If, for instance, you're the, you're the line judge at the bottom of the screen and this receiver is restricting your view because you're standing on the line of scrimmage, take a half a step up the field pre-snap. So instead of aligning here, splitting here with your left and right foot, put your right foot here, put your left foot here, and then that way, you'll be able to see the ball and all of these receivers in your field of vision here. Okay. So we get a false start here, I think called at the top of the screen. I think we're looking at the right tackle here. And honestly, there's let's, let's let's look at it again, but I cannot find anything clear and obvious that beats the snap here. Okay. So, uh a lot of these happened in playoff games where I feel that we get overamped and by this time of the season our our sight is so uh locked in that we may see things a little bit better and fouls that we shouldn't call, we do call because we get very locked in on this situation. Okay. Next play, another false start we call. And I know this is basic line of scrimmage 101 here, but these are these are fouls we have to get right because these are the these are the judgment fouls that you know happen right at the snap. And they're the they're this, and I'll throw in offside, and I'll throw in delay a game. These are the basic fouls as a crew that we got to bang out, because if if we cannot get these correct, then our credibility is not very good with the the official with the uh, with the coaches. Again, we have another call for a false start. 
Do we see anything here clear and obvious that beats the snap? It's tough to it's tough to say, but honestly, I can't see anything there. And I'm not, you know, it's it's not being critical of the officials. This is just a subset of everything throughout the whole season last year. You know, are we talking about number seven at the top? This might give us a better look. But if you watch the ball and then watch the movement of number seven, it happens simultaneous. Okay, so these are ones we've got to get a little bit better at. So I, I do like the movement of the uh, official at the top of the screen. Uh, I, what I would like to see is you're going to report this foul to the referee. So just angle back into the backfield. You can report the foul. You already have the, the umpire in here cleaning up. You should have the field judge and side judge or whichever the deep wings also helping cleaning up. And the other line of scrimmage official at the bottom of the screen will also help clean up any, any action here. But let, let's take a look here. Do we see anything clear and obvious that beats the snap? Watch it again. Um, you know, I can't tell if the if the snap there's a jerk with the snap, but I would if that happened. I would expect the umpire to be down on this too. But again, an, uh, another situation where nothing clear and obvious. So, what do we think about the uh, movement of the? Of the right tackle. Is there anything here? See that little flinch there? Again, we could we have to put ourselves in position. If you're the line of scrimmage official at the bottom of the screen, you have to put yourself in position so that this player is not covering your view of these linemen. Okay, Let's, we'll take a look at the end zone view, and I think it shows it a little bit better. Number 61. See that little flinch movement? That's enough for a false start. And maybe even the referee could pick that up. Flinch and go. Okay, so that's an instance of a, a flinch is a false start. Okay, don't get into the habit of saying, well, the defense didn't react, so it wasn't a, a, a big enough flinch. If you see a player flinch, it's enough for a false start. And a flinch doesn't involve readjustment. It, it's a back falling out of a stance. It's a, it's a lineman like that previous play who makes a movement that simulates the snap. It's a you know a head jerk. Okay, so let's keep those in mind. Let's watch this play. We have another situation. And again, this just doesn't, you know, I, I hesitate to use the word lazy, but just this makes us look uninterested in this game by the actions of just throwing a flag up in the air and standing there haphazardly. Let's work our tail off back to the referee. So I think what gets called is that little rock back by the tackle, but if you watch the ball, he actually times the snap. Okay, it's so another instance where a player times a snap and we call him for just being a little bit earlier than the rest of his team. Okay, so we call another false start here. You know, I don't have numbers, but I, I, are we calling the uh, the movement by the tackle? It's not. It's a little bit unorthodox, but he is allowed to go in motion sideways. Okay, let's let's see if this this view gives us anything different. Okay, that that initial jerk movement is a flinch. Okay, and this is a correct call by the by the line of scrimmage official. It was not a smooth movement. It was a jerk. Then he decides, oh crap, I, I, I hurried up. 
and then we throw the flag. So that's, that is a good call by that official. Watch this again, see if we find anything. The line judge at the bottom of the screen throws it. Looks like we have a little rock back by number four here. Again, that little rock back, although not much, just gives him that little bit of advantage. It's like a flinch. He beats the snap right there. And that's a good call right there by that official. We're looking at the top of the screen. We have another false start here. Is this another situation where somebody times the snap and is just quicker? Let's take a look at the end zone view to see if we see anything here. We can watch the ball. And, you know, unless it was on a receiver doing something on the outside of here, I don't see anything by the interior lineman that, that beats the snap here. So he, here's a situation where, look at the, watch this coach right here. He's, he's going to complain that this guy moves early. Watch the ball and keep that guy in your peripheral. He is just quicker than the rest of his teammates. When he moves, the ball is moving. Watch the hand of the center and watch the, the guy move. And he moves just with the snap. And we do an excellent job here of not calling a false start. Okay? Work on staring at the ball. All right, we see a little flinch by 73 here, right? Uh, so watch it again. So at this, as we have simultaneous movement right here by this player and a flinch by this player. So it's if that player right here is lined up on the line, and I can't tell we don't have a sideline view here, that player's lined up on the line and moves first into the gap, causing this person to react or causing anybody to react because the ball is dead once a defender moves into the neutral zone. We put it on the defense. In this case, we have simultaneous movement by both the defense and the offense here. You can see it's, it's pretty much simultaneous. We're going to put this on the offense, okay? And we do that correctly here with that false start. So we talked about, I talked earlier about readjustments, right? We don't get uber technical with the readjustments. Watch that player right here. He readjusts and guess what? It's good. I'm glad we, there's no call there, right? We have another readjustment at the top of the screen, but it's a little bit closer to the snap, right? We're okay with it, right? Nothing happens. But what I want to look at, we have an end zone view. We don't have an end zone view. And we also don't call a foul on this guy here. Just He just kind of is... You know, kind of unsteady in his stance. Nothing there. We're good. So this is right here. This is overall a uh, really good officiated play from a false start standpoint. All right. Let's watch this play. It's tough to tell, but let's watch. Here's a little tidbit for advanced officials here. When, when you have a guard who cheats into the backfield, nine times out of 10, they're pulling. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna try to beat the snap. 
Okay, so whenever you see that guard just cheating a little bit in the backfield, you know, this comes a little bit more with seasoning and grass time, but you can start to think about, hey, I got a pooling guard here. But let's watch this play here. We call a false start on this tackle. Let's watch the ball and watch the movement of the tackle. Ball moves, tackle moves, right? And I believe we call a false start here. Or that might not, it might not be on that player. We get a flag from the official at the bottom of the screen. And the official in the top of the screen doesn't have anything. So I don't know if we call a false start here or we call a, a defensive offside by this player entering in the neutral zone. But th the reason I wanted to bring up this play is don't be fooled because they're quicker. They're pulling, but they time the snap perfect. Watch how much quicker they are than the rest of their team. So we have another false start call here. Does anybody beat the snap? And I know we don't officiate in slow motion, but I do this to show you how our eyes can get fooled. There is a slight lean here by, by, the, by the back closest to the quarterback. So yes, I'm, I'm okay with that, like, that slight lean coming forward prior to the snap. But again, if you were to say, you know what, I thought that lean was coincided with the snap and you'd be okay and you two have talked to the kid, you go talk to the coach, hey, let's watch our leans because it's it's very close and it's a it's a you know it's a tough get to get. So we don't call false start on this play, which is a good job. Because look, the, the wide receiver number three at the bottom, if I can show you this person right here, and one of the linemen are just quicker than the rest of their players, rest of their teammates, right? And there's no, there's no foul for a false start called here, and it, it was a good job holding in the flag. Apologize, I started this one a little... Got a little excited on this one. So let's watch this play. No false starts was called here, and that's a good job. Everyone. Time the snap perfect. Oh, I was wrong. I'll admit my mistake. Watch what happens to number 64 right here. Watch, watch him. See that little movement? That's enough for a flinch. And so we'll go back to the end zone view. And I'm apologizing for that. So it makes it tough right here for this line of scrimmage official to see because the tight end is covering 54 here. So line of scrimmage official, you got to put yourself in a, in a place where you can see that player. Umpire may also get a piece of this, but watch. See that little flinch? Referee, you're working in that opposite tackle. You can also get a look at that flinch. Okay, this is gone are the days where we just focus on one person. We're a crew out there and we have to do our best to get anything here. But that's a flinch is enough for a false start. Watch it again. This one is a one that we should get right 11 times out of 10. Definitely beats the snap because the center doesn't even snap the ball. So last time I'll show it. Boom. 
and I like the way the official's working his or her way into the play. Okay, enough with false starts. Now we're moving to a legal shift. So when you're the line of scrimmage official, we'll look at the bottom of the screen. You're, you're counting your men on the line of scrimmage, right? But now, okay, I got three people coming out here. I'm putting my foot out right now and saying, my foot is your line. My foot is your line because I know one of those three guys needs to get on the line of scrimmage. I'm staring at the ball. Guess what? I should have all three of these players in my peripheral at all time because I don't know which one's going to step up. Outside guy never gets snap, set. Inside guy goes in motion. And, and we see right away it's a foul at the snap, right? Live ball foul. Then we go in and report it afterwards. Next play. So the running back doesn't seem to know where he's going. Doesn't get set. And this is one where the referee needs to be in tune because we can't expect the line of scrimmage officials who, who are working the, uh, the linemen to see this action going on here, right? Cuts up, doesn't ever get set, back goes in motion. Got a flag for an illegal shift on that situation. Back still, he's kind of set, is he set? Yep, gets set but doesn't, and guess what? He's still, the back is still moving. Doesn't get set. And when I say set for a second, all they got to do is plant their feet, okay? But this back never plants its feet to stop moving, and the other player goes in motion. So we have, if 21 gets set, then we're okay, but 21 never gets set. Again, this should be a foul for illegal motion, and the referees, you can help on this because you see all this action going back here. And you see this player going in motion. So if you throw this flag here, let's just say you throw this flag. And you call over the, the line of scrimmage official who is the line judge down here and say, hey, number 21 came in motion out of the backfield. Did he ever get set? And if the uh, line of scrimmage official says, yes, he got set then all you have to do is say there is no foul for a legal shift two men were not in motion pr prior to getting set before the ball was snapped okay but this is a foul for an illegal shift So another situation here, if you're the line of scrimmage official at the top of the screen, you're seeing both of them move. Oh, are they, they're set up. Oh. One, oh, guess what? We still have both of them moving without getting set because number two thought he was going in motion. So he's shifting, gets set, but we never have both of them get set. And this is an instance, another instance for a foul for an illegal shift. Go back here. So these are very difficult illegal shifts to get. So because they're almost this player is not set before that player goes in motion. And I recognize these are very tough to get. Okay, because you probably have the headlines been looking here and the line judge looking here, and you don't put two and two together. Radios work and say, you know. In situations like this, laying like, hey, if the line judge says, hey, my number two never got set and he came in motion, you radio across. But again, these are very difficult to get. Uh, I would not put this on the referee because, as you can see, this player is outside and, and he would have no idea. But again, this is a situation if this happens and you're able to catch it, this is a foul for an illegal shift. I'll bet very difficult to get. All right, here we have a situation where all 11 players never get set prior to the snap. For those who work on Saturday, we, we know that it's a certain type of foul, but 
for everyone on this video on Friday, this is a live ball foul for an illegal shift. Okay, this player never gets set prior to the ball being snapped. We should have a foul for an illegal shift in this situation. So look, we have we have the quarterback move in here. And does the widest receiver ever get set prior to the ball being snapped? The back foot never gets planted. If the back foot plants prior to the ball snapping, that is not a foul. But in this situation, that wide receiver never stops moving, and we should have a foul for another illegal shift on that situation. So here's an interesting one, and we'll get to the. So we have the quarterback going down, shifting down. Okay. I'm going to tell you this. If this happens in the beginning of the game, you walk over that quarterback and you also communicate to the head coach. Coach, prior to your quarterback sending someone in motion, their hands need to be under the center. Because well, we can call, I'll call this technically, and I don't like to call technical fouls. Technically, this is an illegal shift because the quarterback is shifting under center, never gets stopped, right? But uh, we're going to be generous officials. We're going to do preventive officiating early in the game. And we're going to say, Coach, talk to your quarterback, pull the quarterback over with them and say, hey, prior to putting that guy in motion, get your hands need to be under the center. And if the other coach kind of gives you a gripe, say, Coach, I'd give you the same leeway. I talk to you and prevent the prevent that foul same way talking to you. Okay. But saying that, um, this I would hope that we would not call this a foul for the legal shift, just like these officials did in that situation. Next, the legal formations. We can we need seven on the line, but if so, if, if you trust your line of scrimmage, uh, your referee to know that there are. They count 11 and the umpire counts 11. We should only have four in the backfield, right? So let's look at this situation here. How many do we have in the backfield? One, two, three, four. Even though these players look a little bit staggered, We'll put them where we want, where they want to go. If the line of scrimmage is here, we can call them close enough. However, I would have a discussion with this receiver and that coach and say, Coach, if you run that formation again, make sure number two, who is lined up by me, checks with me and I'll show them where the line of scrimmage is, okay? So the one thing I want to, I, I put this play in here, is th this is, it is not, it is, I believe it's first down. And the umpire needs to look at, we have three players right in there, 50 through 79. We gotta have two more, okay? Umpires don't fall asleep when looking at that. Illegal formation. Let's look at this. So we, we like to be generous with, uh, so we saw the quarterback go under center, right? Right there. So let's count. One, two, three, four. The line of scrimmage is here. This, this guy is in no man's land. That's five. So we only have six men on the line of scrimmage, meaning this should be a foul for an illegal formation. Let's make sure we count our, our players. Next situation here. We like punt, punt teams cause you headaches, right? So look, the line of scrimmage here is at the uh, 36. So it runs right through here. The center's butt runs right along the 40-yard line. These two players right here, this one, and this one are not on the line of scrimmage. There's no way that the heads of these players are breaking the 40-yard line. 
or I'm sorry, the 35 yard line right here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We only have five men on the line of scrimmage. These are situations we cannot fall asleep on. These are important fouls. Okay, these are easy fouls to get. Another situation. One, two, three, four. Where's the ball snapped? The 26-yard line, meaning that the waist of the snapper is probably at the 25-yard line. What do we think about this tackle? In my opinion, that tackle is in the backfield and should be number five. Watch, if you do some scouting on, watch the feet of your tackles. Are they quick? Are they slow? Watch the other team's defensive end. Is that defensive end quick or slow? You're going to see tackles cheat back as the game goes on. Counting, you know, just like counting 11, umpire and referee, line of scrimmage of people. Counting the line of scrimmage on offense to making sure everyone is legal is just a basic fundamental function. All right, offside. Anybody that comes into the neutral zone, looks like this one. We kind of give them 1,001, 1,002. We're yelling at them, right? But then what happens? His partners jump into the neutral zone, kill the clock, hustle in. Hustle in. Another situation. Easy. But look at the body language of the official at the top of the screen. Is that how we want to look? Is that how we want to portray ourselves? by just throwing a flag and standing there. No, we want to hustle. We want to hustle. It's important how you look. If you don't think it is, talk to the coaches. Talk to me. Okay. This player enters the neutral zone. That player enters the neutral zone prior to the snap. Defensive offside, dead ball foul. And it's not simultaneous movement. As you can see, this player clearly is in the neutral zone before this player reacts. So once that defender is in the neutral zone, the play is over. Illegal motion. You cannot move forward prior to the, um, as the ball is being snapped. So what do we have here? Watch this play. Before we watch this play, let's count. The people in the backfield. One, two, three, four, five. Means there's only six on the line of scrimmage. Fundamentals, people. Fundamentals. Watch what this, watch what number 32 does. As the ball is being snapped, step forward, step forward, ball snapped. He never got set. This should be a foul for an illegal motion. And you could say it didn't affect the play. It doesn't affect the play till 32 goes out in the flat and catches a uh, two point conversion. Okay. What I also don't like is right here, watch the referee turn around and look towards the sideline. What happens? The ball snapped right now. You're in no. You're. We're officiating with five people. And referees, I think I've told you before on on extra points, you need to be a little bit deeper. Same thing. Same player. Referee, you're looking right at it. The line of scrimmage official at the bottom of the screen. Should be a foul for an illegal motion. Um, we joke about Canadian football, but watch watch the player going in motion. Forward. That is not shaving. That is definitely moving forward. He's getting an advantage by moving forward. That should be a foul for illegal motion. 
Okay, last play. Um, delay a game on the defense. Okay. If a situation like this I'm sorry causes an offensive player to react, that's not an act. He's not doing a football move. Okay. That's where you uh if, if, it, if somebody would react, that's where I hope somebody would see that and, and call it on the defense. But uh so that's it for so that's the end of the film on the uh fouls at the snap. I know it might have been, you know, a little bit elementary to go through a lot of false starts like that, but I wanted you to get the visualization on beating the snap versus being faster than the rest of their players and timing the snap. So let's work on that this year. And if you have any questions, please let me know.